Cameron. Sure. What a special night in Cameron. I thought the crowd was absolutely incredible and uh, really proud of our team for the growth that we've made this season, uh, their perseverance. You know, NC State is a really good team. They're explosive offensively. I thought our defense was the key to the game. That's been really what we've hung our hat on all year long. Uh, Derek's job on Burns, uh, Tyrese with Smith, and you know, we are fortunate too, they missed some shots, but uh, collectively thought we played a great defensive team. And then down the stretch, Jeremy really made some key plays. You know, I think he scored what, six of our last 10. Uh, pressure free throws with Tyrese, with Jeremy. Uh, we can handle that situation better, but also they're throwing in some big time shots. That's what they do. So really proud of this team, proud to go undefeated at home, uh, to represent Cameron Indoor Stadium this way is a big deal. <laughs> And uh, you know, get refreshed and focus for one more game. What did you do differently defensively from the first game? Huh. I mean, you shut out two of their three guards, just completely. More Cell and Smith just had our time. Well, you know, the fact that we had more points from turnovers than, than they did speaks for itself. I think we had one pick six where they went and laid it in, but besides that, I thought we did a great job making them a half court team. And they're fast. They get down the floor as quick as anybody we've played. Uh, starts there. I don't even want to compare it to the last game because that was, you know, there's, I could go on and on about that. But started there. And then once we got them in the half court, I thought five guys were just moving together. You know, did a good job controlling the ball. Played without fouling for the most part. And uh, give them credit. I thought in the first half they made some tough shots. And that's what they do. But you just need to stay the course and keep playing. Josh, John, I know you expect much things from Jerry as you can and all that, but the last three or four games here, it seems to really elevated to another level. What's, what's he showing you? Just, uh, you know, Jeremy's a winner. He's He's been through it. And, uh, you know, reminds me of last year, you know, at the end with Jeremy in the tournament. And he's done that for us in stretches all year long. But this is the most consistent that he's played. And, you know, we ask a lot of him. You know, he's guarding Joyner, did a heck of a job battling him. Yeah. And then on offense, you know, we need him to score and create. But, uh, you know, he just has a, he has a knack for making timely baskets. You know, we didn't call a timeout. We were up by two, put the ball in his hands. And he, that was a big time bucket there at a key moment. Uh, and then obviously down the stretch to, to carry us and finish, uh, finish the game. But it's just who he is. He's done it really since high school. And, uh, and uh, we need him to continue to do it. John, final time out. It looked like you said to the guys, just one more stop, just one more stop. You sort of walk us through what was going on at that point, or does it say that they had the maturity to actually go and do that? Yeah, that's, that is not an easy position to be in. I mean, that's, that's a tough spot to be in for sure. And, uh, you know, you can get rattled. That's, that's an e easy thing to not have poise. And uh, we didn't turn the ball over. They hit tough shots. And really, it just comes down to one stop at that point. And I thought we were tired because you know, they pick you up the full game, the uh, full court, the whole game, and they can wear you down a little bit. So, you know, we made a couple of tired decisions probably. So just to really uh, buckle down and just get one stop, and we did. John Dick was throwing some different stuff at Burns in the second half, and he was two for ten from the field. Just to talk about the double team and you know what Dick did to slow him down in the second half. <coughs> You know, one, Burns probably missed some looks he normally can make, and, uh, you know, we're fortunate there. Uh, but we ended up not really doubling much because Derek just did a great job battling him. And, you know, it's such a, such a luxury for us to have Derek Lively and have Ryan Young, who are two very different players. Ryan can be very physical when he's in, and Derek, obviously, with his length and instincts and timing, uh, they just did a great job. And so for us, you know, the hardest part was rebounding. He goes after his own rebound, and they're flying in. But uh, I give both those guys a lot of credit for the job they did. Can you just talk about going undefeated in your first season here uh, Cameron? Yeah, it's, you know, it's really special. Uh, I don't, this wasn't something we set out and said, we want to do this. You want to win, you know, as many games as possible. But, you know, for me, the first time I ever visited Duke was coming to a Duke game and I'll never forget it. It was watching Wake Forest. It was 2004 I want to say or 2005. J.J. Redick at 38 and Chris Paul was playing here and since that moment playing in Cameron's always been a dream of mine. 
uh, to coach here is the same thing. And so you want to represent, you know, the, the fans, the students, everybody that's come here to support. They've shown up this year. And in a year of transition, that means so much to me, but it means so much to our players. And uh, there's nothing like it. We want Cameron Indoor Stadium to, to always be the toughest road game in America. And uh, so to do that is a special accomplishment for us. Coach, today was the last um, big basketball game in the student section for a lot of seniors and graduate students on campus. What is your message you have for those students who have supported uh, the basketball team for the last couple of seasons? Yeah, well, one, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, we have a connection with our students and the way that you know our student section works. It's one of a kind, and the support that they give. Uh, I, I don't know about you guys, but our, our I was as loud as could be tonight. I mean, our players were standing five feet from me and couldn't even hear what I was saying. And uh, so their passion. I, I think what's different for us is uh, you know you look at tonight's game and. There are you know, ups and downs you go through, whether it be through the course of the season or whether it be in a game, and they're just always so steady. You know, Our fans, our students, uh, they show up, they support, and we want to do the best that we can to have their backs too. And uh, so thank you would be my message. If I'm reading the standings correctly, if you win Sorry. Saturday and Clemson loses, you get the double bond. What does it mean to get an extra day off? And secondly, except for the crazy pandemic year, we give that one an, ast an asterisk. There's always been at least one Big Four team, and usually more than that. Uh, your thoughts about possibly continuing that history? You know, to be honest with you, I haven't even seen any scores from tonight. So, you tell yeah, okay, so that's good to know. <laughs> and uh, I need to digest it a little bit more. And to even think about the next week, I'm not there yet. You know, it's uh, you want to do you want to double buy? Of course you do. If not. That's a great opportunity also. We're going to be in a good spot. It's just a matter of where and who we're playing against. Since, you know, I told our guys for, you know, this game, uh, Saturday, every game moving forward, you know, there's a lot on the line. Like you're playing somebody that believes they should win, and it's, uh, it's going to be a tough game. So to win this, I thought it was great preparation for what's to come in March, regardless of what seed we end up getting. And, you know, every game we play means a lot, and Saturday is no exception. You've talked all year about growth. As we're getting close to the postseason now, how pleased are you with how this team has grown and the direction it's trending in right now? I'm really proud. Uh, I'm just, it's it's not easy, you know, for these guys with whether it be expectations, pressure, noise, what, whatever you want to call it, uh, the way they stuck together. And, and at this time of the year, the teams that I've been a part of that have the best chance to move on, they're really together and they have great belief. And for us, going through what we've gone through this season, I think we have both those things at a high level. Can we clean up some things and be better and then uh, finish a game? Could we finish a game better tonight? Can we you know, shoot the ball better? Absolutely. But those things are going to happen. Uh, you have to have the togetherness. You have to have the belief. And that's what I'm most proud of. And uh, it doesn't stop. The growth continues. We, we need to be better Saturday than we were tonight, and uh, so on and so forth uh, for the postseason. 16 and 0. John, is it possible <laughs> that Mike traded last year's last game <laughs> so that you would never lose at home? <laughs> that's, uh, he's a generous person, but I don't know if uh, that's the case. Trust me, he's, he's won. You know, more than anybody's ever won. I don't think he's you know sacrificed any of that. Well, as long as you keep winning, yeah, totally worth it. Speaking of last, speaking of last year, he came noted on somewhere along the way to March that there was a specific stretch between I think Florida State and Virginia last year that he said this is an older Duke team now. This is a team that's ready for March. Has this team had that point yet? Is there a specific thing or a game that you can look at? <coughs> You know, I, I think uh, I think for us the Syracuse game was a big step. You know, doing it away from here, and uh, I don't look at our guys like freshmen anymore either. You know, we're we're at a point where we've gone through a lot. Uh, we've played neutral games against big time opponents, road games, obviously here at home, and uh, now finally we have like, we know each other. You know, and I love the camaraderie, and you know, I think we're there in terms of uh, the maturity and understanding what it takes. I think that's really, when you talk about freshmen or being young, it's not understanding what it takes. You just have never gone through it before. And for us, 
I think uh, I think we know that now. To expand on that, the second half when State was making a run, you decided not to call a timeout. So like you're just trusting your guys. Is, is your trust for them at a higher level than maybe it was early in the season? Yeah, it's trust is a delicate thing, and it's something that you know you we've gone we've grown through together, and uh, you know we've. You look around college basketball, there's some crazy endings and some crazy finishes. This is a game that other teams have lost. And so just making the pressure plays when it matters, uh, the free throws, uh, the, the key rebound down the stretch, I, don't, I can't even remember who got it. There was a hectic last minute. Uh, but those are the plays that our guys, I just I felt we were going to make. And uh, the toughness, the poise to do it, uh, it's, it's been there from this group. I'm sure you don't want to go two for 19 on threes, but the maturity. Not ideally. That, that wasn't that wasn't in the game plan. <laughs> the maturity of this team to shoot that way and still pull out a win against a really good team says what? Well, it says a lot about our defense. You know, our, it's we have uh, everybody that's on the floor. They they're busting their butt on the defensive end, and we have a really we have a unique player, Derek Lively, who you talk about growth. Think about his growth throughout the whole season. I mean, he's he's an absolute game changer, and uh, you know, I, I never think his numbers quite reflected. But you know, six and twelve, you know, he only has two block. When I say only two block shots, he alters you know countless others. Uh, but you have a unique player in him, and then it, we have guards that can a perimeter that can really defend, and everybody's bought into that. So t for me, our defense has been top notch. One of our and the league guys was telling me, in, in the month of February, we've had a top 10 defense in the country. And uh, that's that's what's carried us. And obviously, offensively, the way we shared it, the way NC State plays, it's hard to share the ball. Like it, It's just hard to get into a rhythm because of the way they pressure and deny. And so they kind of force you to make some plays, which Jeremy and Tyrese you know, made a bunch of them. Tyrese on the defense, man, you talked about how much he's grown as a perimeter defender. What is he specifically doing? Technically, that has allowed him to take these strides and to you know shut down. He just never stops. You know, he just never stops. He's always in a stance. He's got great attention to detail, great focus, and then he has really good balance when he's guarding the ball. Like it's hard to get him, you know, up on fakes, and he just is really disciplined. So when you, when when someone does score on him, it's it's a tough shot. It's over the top, and uh, and it also helps you when you have number one back there protecting the room. Coach, this is um, for Duke Yearbook. Um, what has been your biggest personal challenge this season as a new coach, and how are you feeling moving forward? I can only give you one. Is that? Uh, any, uh, as much as you want. <laughs> no. Um, you know, I, I think just uh, the biggest challenge is, is doing it with a new group. You know, it's, it's, it's been a lot of new this year, and you want it to be a lot of the same, the, the culture that we have. and. Uh, you know, Cameron, there's a lot of things you want to continue to move forward, but you're doing it with a group that's never done it with me before, and I haven't done it with them, except for Jeremy, really, and Jalen, you know, last year, even though he didn't play as much. And so that's been the biggest challenge, and that's why I'm so proud of, you know, the, the perseverance that our group has had and the togetherness that I spoke about earlier. What does Derek's versatility give you guys from a skill perspective? We, we talked about the blocks, his ability to alter shots. Um, people can see that stuff. But his ability to, to switch out like he did against Pittsburgh, or his right. ability to play at the level, or maybe even hang a little bit higher today against Jaquavion and Jarkel. How do you feel having a guy like that anchoring your defense at the point of attack, especially heading into the postseason play where you might be seeing different opponents you know, every other day or the short intervals to kind of get ready? It, it, you know what? It, it's a luxury. It, it really is. We, we've We've defended ball screens really every way possible this year. We've dropped them, switched, blitzed, uh, and then not to mention his post defense has come a long way. And then his rim protection, doing it, he's always done it, but doing it without fouling, uh, it's, it's a huge luxury to have. And so really any game plan, like we never have any issue switching him onto a guard. It's about not trying to switch our guards onto bigs and just getting that mismatch. And so his ability, to do that late in games uh, is really important. We switch more towards the end of games. And uh, you know, you play different teams in different styles. And uh, so it's a big time luxury. All right, Coach, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay.